So a question I get asked a lot is, and I'm sure you guys get asked a ton, right. is, okay, I got diagnosed with cancer. I want them both out, do a bilateral mastectomy. I don't want it to come back, and I'm sure that will make me get less other treatments, right? Yeah. So what do you guys say to that? I hear that all the time, right? You get cancer, take them off, because that must be the better operation. It's a big operation. but. You know, it's important for patients to understand that that's actually not the better operation, right? It's doing probably a necessary surgery. And it's easy to think that way because we see celebrities doing it all the time, right? Right. Just take it off and they look great on the red carpet afterwards, right? <laughs> yep. I'm sure you've gotten that question too. Absolutely. I tell them it's really not the better operation. Bigger isn't always better. What do you tell them? There's so many studies now that are showing that um, we're actually seeing better survival rates with breast conservation and radiation. Um, I also think that it really puts them into a false sense of security, having a bilateral mastectomy. Yeah. They're convinced like it can never come back. I'm never gonna get another breast cancer. And as you said, that they're like, oh, well, if I do more surgery, then I get to do less other things. And while in some cases you may be saved from having to do radiation, doesn't change your need for chemotherapy, doesn't yeah. change your need for endocrine therapy. Yeah. And again, the, the much bigger operation, as we said, isn't always the better one. Um, yeah. I've seen lots of patients recently who have come back, um, you know, not my patients to begin with, but patients who have come back who've had mastectomies many years ago. Yeah. They didn't, they weren't getting their mammograms. They weren't really being followed very well. And they yeah. come in with a big mm. palpable mass. Yeah. And they and think it's a scar. They think it's a scar. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. From their reconstruction mm -hmm. yep. and they didn't think anything of it because they thought I can never have breast cancer again. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. And we know that, you know, as much as we try with a mastectomy operation, we can't take away all of the breast tissue. Right. And then to not be looking, it's very hard for us to then detect anything if it happens. But I think part of the reason why, you know, people think a mastectomy is the best operation is because they think just because they've had one cancer, now they're going to get another one, right? I'm sure you get that question mm -hmm. too, right? Yeah. But that's not usually the case. Because usually it's not genetic. It's right. like one random thing that happened. Right. And you don't, you know, the odds of getting hit by lightning twice are <laughs> yep. not high. Right. So the odds of you getting a second new cancer that is unrelated to this yeah. is the same as everybody else. Right. That takes a while for people to internalize right. that. Or I tell them, if something is wrong with this arm, do you do something to the other arm? Like, that's the thing that gets me. It's like, why the other <laughs> yeah. breast? Poor other breast. Right. Well, so they think it jumps from breast to breast. They do. Right. They're like, it's going to spread to the other one. Right. It's no. going to jump yeah. there. You're like, and we're like, they're separate entities. <laughs> right. they, and again, as you said, like their risk doesn't increase mm -hmm. just because they've had a breast yeah. cancer. Now, of course, if you do have patients like, you know, the celebrities that we see, like Angelina Jolie, who have a mutation, genetic mutation. Genetic mutation that's a totally different right, that's their conversation. But, but that's 10% your, of the population, you know. Right, but for your average cancer. risk woman with your average breast cancer, there's really no benefit to doing more surgery. Absolutely not. And I think it is, like you said, the false sense of security, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then they don't have to do anything. Right. Right. They, they ask me all the time, okay, if you remove both breasts, why do, you, why do I need chemo? Why do I need to do endocrine therapy? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, it's it's not just surgically removing it, right? It's the biology. How does it want to act? And how does it want to, you know, spread? And it's, it's really hard for us to say one can replace the other. Right. And this is why in our multidisciplinary clinic, we have them see three doctors, right? Mm -hmm. Some people ask me, why do I need three doctors to treat one disease? <laughs> right. Right? Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to do different things to attack one thing. Yep. So a bigger operation is really not the better. But then now you're committing them to reconstruction. Right? You're committing them to a lifetime of maybe re-operations. Because it's not just take something out, put something in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? There's a whole other kind of Pandora's box. And your sensation always going to be different forever, yeah. Yeah. the way you look, yeah. but the whole operation itself, the risks of it, yeah. it's going to be so different. The infectious yeah. risk if you use yeah. an implant, the scarring mm -hmm. risk if you use an implant, and then what if you want to do tissue? That's a big, giant operation. It's great that we have that opportunity if patients need it, but it's definitely a little frustrating at times when people have that teeny, tiny cancer and they think yeah. they need everything taken away.
which happens a lot. The other thing, mm -hmm. you know, that I think patients don't think about either is, is that if you're doing the surgery on both sides, if you're doing a mastectomy on both sides, putting in an implant, you're definitely increasing your risk for complications on the non-cancer side, right? Yeah. So what if you put an implant in and the non-cancer side is the one that gets an infection and you have to remove that implant and then you can't, you can't get put to in, chemo. You can't right. get to chemo right. because the other breast is, and as we said, it's more about the biology, it's more about treating the the cancer and how it wants to behave. And so the systemic therapy is, is just as important. Yeah. And again, delaying your ability to get to chemotherapy, because mm -hmm. I do think a lot of our patients who have larger cancers that we may not necessarily be able to do breast conservation on, those are gonna be the ones that are more likely gonna need the, the chemotherapy or they have positive lymph nodes. And so, you know, definitely talking to patients about, hey, there's risk on this side too, that you might delay your care for your actual cancer that you have. Yeah. Right. And right. my favorite phrase in training is there's no surgery like no surgery. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? And it's like that with most therapy. If you don't need it, why do it? Right. Right. There's a risk, there's a benefit. And unfortunately, a lot of people think that they have more benefit than they really do, mm -hmm. like truly have. And they think they have less risk than they truly have. And that's where there's a bit of an imbalance. And and I think, you know, you and I, I think, spend a lot of time Definitely. talking to patients, right? I'm sure you've seen a lot less mastectomies in our <laughs> clinic. Which <laughs> so right. I'm very happy about. Right. Yes. And my, I think we have some tools, which I think mm -hmm. is helpful, right? Even larger cancers, we can take it out. Um, everybody's afraid of re-excisions, like, oh my gosh, something went wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for people to also understand that surgery, it's not like there's, here's cancer, I cut around it. Yeah. Right? I, I wish always people... joke, it's, it doesn't light up like purple for you. Right. But we wish it did, but... We wish we... Yeah. <laughs> and you can't look at it right away, so right? it's not that we're not trying to get around it, but it's not this visible kind of mass that I can just scoop out, right? And so... I love the fact that we have the oncoplastics option because it does allow us to take a little extra. Is it perfect? It's not perfect, but at least it gives us room to take a little more tissue. It allows us to reshape it so that you don't leave a big deformity. Right. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better than having post-op clinic and they're like, look at my boobs, they look great. Yeah. I get that right? a lot. It's like, you? oh, you need to take a look. I'm like, I'm fine. Like, no, 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 see what they did? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be able to come out of cancer and be able to feel like mm -hmm. you're happy with what you're left with, I think is the biggest bonus, right? Yeah. right? I think it's so interesting too, because like, again, you know, as a breast surgeon, we don't only see our own patients. We see patients who have had cancer many years ago, who have been treated with standard incisions and standard external beam radiation. And even our nurse navigators will come in and they're like, wait, that's like, that's, that's, how, an, you did that's it. how they used to do it? Like, that's an option. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, it makes a lot of sense that we're able to really give these women that opportunity to do our best to really minimize that defect because some of the ones I've seen are really deforming. And I think that that is one of the reasons why a lot of women started, I think we've talked about this before, women started to kind of see that, yes, you can do a partial mastectomy, but then you're left with a pretty deformed looking breast. Yeah. And so for them, of course, cosmetically, a mastectomy seemed like the nicer option, right? Oh, it's gonna look so much better if I just do the mastectomy and I put an implant in. So I think that's one of the things we really can offer our patients is being able to be like, hey, look, we have an option to do the partial yeah. mastectomy and not leave you like what you might be able to Google and, yeah. and see what partial mastectomies used to look like. Right. It's like the evolution of medicine, right? We started with a lot. Mm -hmm. We took the breast, we took the muscle, we took all the lymph nodes. Then we started doing a little less. We just took the breast, not the lymph nodes as much. And then we got to breast conservation. But the whole goal was cancer. It wasn't about how it looked. It was like, I took out the cancer and you have kind of something that looks kind of like a breast. Yeah. So you should be happy. Mm -hmm. And then it became, oh, well, it looks terrible. Like women woke up and was like, this does not look like a breast, you know? Yeah. Like this is half the size of the other. It's asymmetric, mm -hmm. it's deforming, and they don't want to look at themselves. It's not a vanity issue. It's more of feeling whole. Yeah. Feeling like something wasn't taken away. And so I think with oncoplastics, again, we're now peeling back from the mastectomy. About it, the appearance is important, right? We, we figure that out with women wanting to do more mastectomies. But 
now we've taken it another step. We can do breast conservation in a way that we can still mm -hmm. preserve their appearance mm -hmm. and we can do a symmetry procedure at the same time. We don't have to wait two, three months to do the symmetry. You can do it all in one operation. There's no reason why you need to be lopsided for months at a time. And so, you know, we're, it's an exciting time for breast cancer treatment, right? Yeah. I'm glad, you know, that we can offer all of these options for them. Because sometimes in the heat of it, when you first diagnose, you don't care how you look. <laughs> you don't, you're like, yes. you're like, I don't care. I'm Just not get vain, it out. I don't care. I'm sorry. Yeah. But Hopefully, when you get to the other side, yeah. years down the line, when thankfully you're cured, yeah. then you're thankful. It's like, I'm glad they yeah. did the surgery on me then, yeah. and they didn't rush me to this or that, yeah. but they actually did the right thing that actually gives yeah. me a, you know, the appearance yeah. as well, because there's no reason not to when you get to the other side, which right. thankfully a lot of patients, all patients do. And we both follow a lot of our patients over time, and I've actually had them come back at like five years, and they're like, I am so glad I did it this way. I'm so glad I did the other, because they struggle with that. It's like, I don't want to operate on a normal breast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't have to, but it's something to think about. It's yeah. easy to heal from. It's an outpatient surgery. And then you see them four or five years later, and they're like, I've talked to my friends. I've seen what it can look like. And they're mm -hmm. like, I am so glad yeah. I had the option to do this. And this is where, you know, I wish more women would ask for these options. Like a lot of times, it's so frustrating. You get the patients who come and see you and they're like, I was never offered that option, right? Yeah. You don't know that it exists. Right. You don't know that such a thing exists. Right. right. And this is why it's so important for us to train the next generation and that why the fellowship is important to us so that we can help teach somebody else so that they can do it. People ask me all the time, why wasn't I offered this mm -hmm. somewhere else? You know, yeah. why didn't they ask, you know, tell me that I could do it? But it's a physical skill. It's something that it you have to training. learn. It takes training, it takes more work, it takes more skill. So yeah. Right, it is something that you have to learn to mm -hmm. be able to do and be comfortable right. doing. So if we can train more people to do it, then we can save more women mm -hmm. from losing yeah. their breast and feeling deformed. I think it's really important too, like we, you know, you and I both had really good mentors um, when we went through training. And, sure. you know, I think we've taken it a step farther, doing it ourselves, um, but, uh, you know, it's, if you don't have that mentality and that kind of changing the way that medicine is. And yeah. So I'm you know, excited to be a part of, as I said, training the next generation and, yeah. and getting out there. So it is offered at more places. So that is an option for more yeah. patients. I feel like that's kind of the spirit of our program. Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? Right. Sure. Yeah. It's like with the clinical research that you mm -hmm. do and the chemotherapy trials that we have available and the systemic therapy trials, it's the same with surgery. It's like we're always thinking, how can we make it better? Right. How can we make it easier on mm -hmm. the patient so that it's easier healing time, but provide the, the same amount of care so that we can treat the cancer appropriately?